What if I told you that using a heater in your tent is both safer and more dangerous than you thought? I put eight heaters through a ton of safety tests using an industrial gas detector to find out the question if tent heaters are safe. The results might make you think twice about using a heater in your tent in the first place. The first test is what do all these manuals say about these heaters? Most of these heaters are specifically not meant for indoor use. Although the Flame King says it's safe for indoor use, in the manual it says it's not. So you got to be careful about what you see in your Amazon descriptions or otherwise where you buy it. It might seem like it could be used in an indoor situation, but it's possible that it's not rated for that. I thought it was interesting that Mr. Heater is pretty much the only one in this price range that has indoor rated heaters, but even they have the same warnings of carbon monoxide and they even said that they are only for emergency indoor use. And going camping with your family on the weekend is not really an emergency. Even though I tested many of these heaters that are not rated for indoor use inside a tent, I'm not saying that these are safe for use in a tent. If you Google tent heaters, you'll find many blogs recommending some of these products, even though they're rated to not be used indoors. So I think that's kind of crazy. I just wanted to test to see how dangerous these products were and whether it's all a big fuss or if there's something to it. If you stick to the end of this video, I'll show you what happened when I put a couple of these heaters inside a car. All right, the first safety test, the tip test, arguably the most important feature. Some of these heaters didn't have tip detection and so I could say that these are not applicable, but again, I'd say if you were considering a heater to go inside a tent that the tip auto cutoff feature is almost a must. Otherwise, the heater has to be extremely stable. The rest of these heaters had a tip detector that cut off the heater at about 30 to 45 degrees. And they all passed pretty well, except Mr. Heater's golf cart heater. The golf cart heater is meant for open vehicle use like a golf cart and has a cup holder stand and so it's actually technically not meant to be used indoors. In the documentation that came with the golf cart heater, it says that the tip detector is a little less sensitive than their other heaters. So that's why it didn't go off, but still, it wasn't good enough for me. It's not really safe for indoor use. What about stability overall? The Martin CH3, even though it doesn't have a tip detector, was the most stable by far because it was in this tripod formation. None of the heaters that use a propane bottle as a stand felt that secure to me. In fact, the least stable heater I felt was the Little Buddy, which is one of the few that are rated for indoor use. It's top and forward heavy, and its stand does not fan out like the cheapest heaters. The Flame King and the Portable Buddy were better, but I'd say the most secure was the Portable Buddy out of the two. Let's get to the gas tests. I did so many gas tests. Propane heaters emit carbon monoxide. And I'll show you some of the highlights. The most dangerous carbon monoxide wise for a gas heater is when you first light it. I want to be clear though that a dangerous levels of carbon monoxide are between 25 to 50 parts per million for eight hours of exposure or more. So 25 to 50 parts per million for you know 30 seconds isn't really dangerous. But I did think it was a test worth doing. The worst light gas test goes to the light little buddy getting up to 37 parts per million carbon monoxide right above the unit. Even the other outdoor radiant heaters did better. The best light gas test goes to the portable buddy getting up to 10 parts per million carbon monoxide. The Flame King did about the same. After that, I did another gas test to see how much gas these devices emitted just during normal use. Ironically, the little buddy again did the worst during normal use. 15 parts per million, which is higher than any of the other heaters actually during normal use. This has been running for 15 minutes. The best were the Martin and the Tech Sport. And I admit, I did something a little crazy that you should never do. I lit a camp stove inside the tent and I couldn't measure any carbon monoxide readings. Surprised? I was. As a note, just because I couldn't detect carbon monoxide doesn't mean that carbon monoxide was being emitted. Furthermore, burning things, especially this hot, is, uses a lot of oxygen, so ventilation is crucial in any situation. All of these heaters are emitting other gases, including water vapor, which decreases the oxygen concentration. So that was testing like right next to the, the heaters, but what about a situation where you actually would be using? You're not gonna be sitting right above the heater. Let's test to see what happens when you run these heaters in 15 minutes in a tent. I let all these heaters run in our nine by 10 tent for about 15 minutes with all the ventilation available. I then tried this again for 15 minutes with slightly less ventilation in our big tent. Good news, all the heaters passed even the camp stove, except one. The Flame King did well in almost every respect, 
the Flame King was malfunctioning. Carbon monoxide levels in the tent were 10 parts per million, which again, isn't dangerous, but it is a bad sign that the fact that carbon monoxide was building up in the general area of the tent. The sputtering means the heating element isn't lighting the way it's supposed to, causing an incomplete burn and putting off a lot of carbon monoxide. My takeaway is this. These are great devices. I don't want to downplay them, but if the unit is defective or if otherwise something has damaged the unit or something is obstructing it, which I'm guessing might have happened in this case, then using a gas heater can be fatal. This could happen to you or to any tent heater. Never use any of these heaters unattended, which means don't sleep with any of these heaters running. If the heater malfunctions or any of its safety features don't work, then you'd be in a really bad situation. So almost all the heaters passed in the big tent, but what about in a smaller area? Before I show you what happened in a small tent, if you're enjoying this video or you feel like it's good information, make sure and give it a like so that it can reach more people. I feel like this information could keep some people safe. Turns out every one of these heaters did find when I had the tent properly ventilated, although this tent is way too small for any of these heaters. Then I tried a very plausible scenario of someone being lazy and not pulling out the tent guy lines. I admit I have done this myself sometimes. I even made it worse by covering up the vent partially. This could happen from snow or from a twig that falls just so. It's not that crazy of a situation. Ventilation is extremely important when you're using any kind of gas powered heater. And this is just a demonstration of again, why you shouldn't use any of these heaters unattended. Now, what about this oxygen depletion system that many of these heaters are equipped with? You might be thinking, wouldn't that save me in a bad situation? I set about to test how sensitive this gas detector was, and I could never get the oxygen sensor to kick in. I tried this with Mr. Heater's little buddy and their golf cart heater, but both got to 19.5% oxygen where it's considered unsafe. I even tried this with Mr. Heater's portable buddy and let the alarms go for five minutes. This carbon monoxide was up to 50 parts per million, which isn't deadly yet, but it's getting to the point where someone who is sensitive to it could be in danger. I was surprised that the O2 sensor never kicked in. So I'm sure that the O2 deprivation sensor does work. I just don't know when it cuts on. And in my mind, it's not something you should rely on if you're in a bad situation. Always make sure you have plenty of ventilation. Another test I was really wondering about is what happens if something gets inside the heater? This stuff I found was just sitting inside our tent. Perfect for this test. I wanted to see how the heater would react. And this seems a little crazy and I know it is, but it's not unreasonable to expect that debris can get into your heater if you're using it outdoors in general or in a tent. The results were about the same for all of them, except the golf cart heater actually did the best because it had a screen over it preventing the debris from getting inside. My takeaway is this, that a little bit of debris, it's going to cause the carbon monoxide levels to kick up for several seconds, but it's not going to be a bad situation if there's proper ventilation. However, I did this for the Flame King and it, this might be why the heater started failing later on. And so it, again, to me that something small and unobtrusive, such as a piece, a little tiny piece of grass, can cause really big problems and these things can't be trusted without being monitored closely. Several of these manufacturers have instructions on cleaning these units. If you're storing your heater in a shed out of its box, for example, you might have to clean these more often. Another important safety feature that these heaters had was a blowout detector. And I just don't know what to call this feature, but basically that if the flame goes out, that the gas will turn off. This isn't really something to be worried too much inside a tent, but it's nice to know if it works properly. The Martin Radiant and the Tech Sport I thought didn't work, but after testing it outside, I found that the units ran for about 40 seconds, but in 40 seconds with the propane on, that's gonna fill the tent with propane, and that could be actually a, a bad situation. Mr. Heater's golf cart heater did second worst by shutting off when the gas levels got to 23% above the heater. The rest of the heaters did fine, letting the gas get to about 10 to 13% right above the heater. One heater I couldn't test, and that was the Martin CH3. I tried really hard to get the gas to start converting, but I couldn't do it. So, I don't know if this feature works for this heater, but 
There you go. Lastly, I was super curious what happens if you tried these heaters inside a car. But if you're interested in knowing how the performance of these heaters did, like how hot they made the tent and how long they burned, make sure and check out the video I'll link to in the description. So to summarize, are tent heaters safe inside a tent? Well, the answer is a bit complicated. I think that you can use these heaters in certain situations, but you've got to be extremely careful. You got to make sure that these heaters are really stable. On a tent floor, I found that it's not really that stable on a bumpy, you know, uneven floor. So you got to make sure that these aren't going to go anywhere. Furthermore, you have to make sure that they're clear from the tent walls and from any bedding or anything that can ignite. And of course, never sleep with any of these heaters. Basically, if you follow the manufacturer instructions, you should be okay. Me personally, I think I would try and avoid these heaters if I can. I would try and encourage you to bring enough insulation for your body and for your bedding to keep you warm rather than relying on a propane gas heater. I'd say if you do want to use one that you can use it when you're getting ready for bed or when you're getting up in the morning because I mean that's the worst part about camping is getting outside of your nice warm sleeping bag in the morning. So I used the golf cart heater and the little buddy in a car and the results were a little surprising. I took the windows down about one inch including the sunroof and I found that carbon monoxide was still building up inside the vehicle. It wasn't until I opened the window about three inches that the carbon monoxide stopped building up. A car is an extremely enclosed space and it's very dangerous to use a gas heater inside that space. If you need to use one, I'd say to only use it in an emergency and make sure you have a palm's width of clearance for your windows to make sure that there's adequate ventilation. That much ventilation though is going to be letting in cold air, so you're gonna to have to make the judgment call of whether it's worth it or not. Don't forget to like the video if you did. Thanks for watching.